What's going on guys? Today I'm doing a One Piece video and more specifically I'm talking about the value of Treble as a character. Now hold your horses, I know a lot of people are already tempted to click off of this video because who really likes Treble, okay? Pretty much everyone hates him, every time he's on screen you just want to throw up, he's a complete moron, makes weird noises, stupid laugh, and is just pretty much annoying throughout the entire Law and Luffy vs. Dofi fight. Now, don't get me wrong here, I'm not gonna go and tell you that Treble is one of my favorite characters in One Piece, okay? I completely agree with you, I hate him pretty much every time he's on screen, it's just disgusting to watch, I get kind of annoyed by him, but at the same time, I think that is what makes him such a key character in the Dress Rosa, the Doflamingo plot. Now, I got the motivation for this idea one day when I was talking to my friend Riggs, most of you probably know him, especially if you've tuned into my live streams at any point, and he was talking about how his absolute least favorite character is Treble. Even though he hates Ace almost as much as I do, he absolutely despises Treble. And while I was saying that I could agree with that, that I don't like seeing him, he's really annoying, I was arguing that he has a very important role in the plot. And plot might not even be the best word because Dress Rosa would go along quite smoothly without him, all of the stuff in Dofi's backstory would be okay, he could easily be replaced. I, what I'm really trying to say here is that he enhances Dofi's character more than anyone else, and that's really good since, you know, for me, and I know a lot of people, Dofi is my favorite character, and you know, if not, then you probably like him quite a bit, I don't think most people just straight up hate him. So I think if anyone enhances Dofi's character in any way, that is a great responsibility, that is a great thing that they are doing because Dofi's character is already so awesome, and for them to make him even better or at least give us more insight on that character, they are a very valuable member of this story. So now you have to be asking yourself, how in the hell does this guy enhance Dofi's character? All he does when he is on screen is just make obnoxious noises, make fun of Law for no reason even though Law is significantly stronger than him. He pretty much just rides Dofi's wiener the entire fight. It doesn't seem like he's really doing much for Dofi at all. But that's exactly it. That is the thing about Treble, okay? What that what does that say about Dofi? If Treble, besides Vergo, is pretty much the highest person up in Dofi's executives. When we look at Dofi as a character by himself, before we came to Dress Rosa, before we knew all about the Don Quixote family, when we just saw him, he is this super cool, kind of wacky guy. When he needs to be, he can be calm and collected. When he's just having fun, he goes around killing people in the most crazy way possible. Okay. And in Punk Hazard, the first arc of the Dress Rosa saga, the only real member we get to see out of his family besides Baby Five and Buffalo, but they only come at the very end and they don't do too much, is Vergo. We know that he is the, like, kind of guy who goes out and does special missions for the Don Quixote family, so he is all we really know as a true big member of Dofi's family. We see that he's super powerful, he's able to have a very good battle against Law, even though Law was able to beat him in the end. You know, I mean, it was it was an interesting battle, it was pretty close if you ask me. And on top of that, the entire time we see him, even though he's a little weird, he always has things stuck on his face, he's kind of slow, he says a, a few stupid things to Dofi over the Den Den Mushy. He, again, is pretty cool, calm and collected, okay? He seems just like an overall badass. Regardless of having a few strange idiosyncrasies, he does manage to be pretty badass as far as we've seen, and usually gets the job done as long as he's not facing one of the strongest members of the worst generation. And while nothing was set in stone or anything, it was a fair assumption to think, okay, uh, we're gonna go to Dress Rosa now and we're gonna see Dofi and all of his executives, they're all gonna be like Vergo super badasses, really like dark kind of characters, really cool. But then, of course, we get to Dress Rosa, and we pretty quickly see all the executives, even when they're, like, shrouded in the darkness in the room where the four top executives are supposed to sit. Diamante seems to be a little bit of a freak, okay? I mean, he wants some serious attention from Dofi in pretty much the most ludicrous way possible. Like, it was, he was easily embarrassing himself, you know, anyone could see that, but Dofi plays along. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, I'm talking about when Dofi is showing that he has Ace's fruit now and he is going to entrust it to Diamante. And Diamante is like, oh, no way. You know, I, I can't, Dofi, you can't trust me with such an important task. And Dofi's like, no, 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 you have to be the one to do it. Only you can do it. And he's like, no, no, no. Dofi's like, you know, you're you're a genius. You have to do it. And he's like, no. He's like, you're, you're the hero of the Coliseum. He's like, no, no, no. And then Dofi's like, oh, 
well, okay, I tried. I guess I'll do something else with this. And he's like, okay, if you're going to admit I'm a genius, I'm a hero of the Coliseum, then okay, I'll do it. And see, that's the kind of thing. It, it, we're instantly shown that these guys are all complete idiots. Not so much like the wacky kind of way Dofi is. You know, he's just kind of like a psychotic serial killer as far as we've seen in the War of the Best and whatnot. But no, these guys are just looking a little weird so far. I think we even got a little bit of a glimpse of trouble at that point. He obviously had a stupid voice, but that's not really canon, I guess. But he, he just acts a little weird. Pretty much what I'm trying to say right now is that within the Don Quixote family, pretty much everyone there, especially the top executives, are complete freaks in one way or another. They're really silly. They're not like what you'd expect from Vergo, at least not the cool and collected parts of Vergo. It's more like the getting shit stuck on his face kind of Vergo. That's what everyone in that family is like, where Dofi is really just the complete badass on top. So why is it that Dofi wants these people in his crew? Why would he want people making fools of themselves, making Dofi look like an idiot by being in his crew all the time? That, that doesn't really just seem to fit in his character where he believes himself to be a god. Yet at the same time, we have the one scene where one of the underlings for the Don Quixote family accidentally laugh when they hear Pika's voice for the first time, and Dofi completely massacres this person and says that absolutely no one will make fun of any member of his family. And he is not doing this just so his crew members do stay loyal to him, okay? He's not putting on a show at all. He was genuinely pissed off. He was very angry at this man and killed him immediately. He was not happy with going on here. He just... He was very upset that Pika was being made fun of because Pika is a member of his family. So I think it goes without saying that despite all these people being a little weird, unlike Dofi, he has a very high value on every single one of them. He doesn't want to see any of them going through any kind of pain or danger, and he wants to genuinely help them. So what is so interesting about this is, like I'm trying to say, at the times we've seen him in Jaya, the War of the Best, everywhere before the Dressrosa saga, maybe even Punk Hazard before we really even knew so much about the majority of his executives, we would have thought like no way this guy would have people like this in his crew. It doesn't make sense, he's too cool of a guy, he would not want these kind of people representing him in the Don Quixote family. But this idea is completely turned on its head once we get deeper into the Dressrosa saga because what we find out is what Dofi values among anything else, more importantly, is that his crew is loyal to him. And not even just loyal to him, okay? I know a lot of people are going to be like, well, Bellamy did everything that he could to be loyal to Dofi. He really wanted to be one of his crew members. But Dofi didn't accept Bellamy because Bellamy went about it in the wrong way. Bellamy just thought that he could become a member of the Don Quixote Pirates because he admired Dofi, he thought he was a really cool person, he always saw him, like, as an admirable figure, okay? He believed that Dofi could become the Pirate King, but that is not what Dofi wants in a crew member, okay? What Dofi values more than anything, and this is shown as evident in his flashbacks, is that he wants his crew members to believe that he is the true king chosen by the heavens. This is what every single one of his crew members believe. It's just a matter of fate. They're in it for the ride, okay? He, no matter what, is going to become the Pirate King because he is the true man chosen by the heavens. Treble even explicitly states this when Dofi and Luffy are clashing their Conqueror's hockeys together. We also get the flashback of him saying the same thing when he was just a child, telling him, you are the true king chosen by heaven, okay? He was explaining how his madness, his anger as a child, nurtured him to become this unstoppable monster, this demon that we know him as now. At the end of the day, Dofi is a monstrosity of pure anger and determination to become the man he thinks he was born to be, the man that people have been telling him since he was just a little kid, since he was getting shit on by random ass adults even though he hadn't really done anything wrong to them specifically. He was told time and time again as a child by his peers, by the top executives of the Don Quixote family, that he was a god, and because of this, he has clearly developed a god complex. Without these people, Dofi would have perhaps never found anyone he could truly call the Don Quixote family if he had not found these top executives who just believed from the start that he didn't have to prove anything to them. They already knew that he was a god, that he was going to be the man to become king of this world, to destroy everything. That's what they thought, that's what Dofi wanted them to believe, and that's why 
they always have been and always would have been if he had not been taken down the top executives of the Don Quixote family. This really does speak a lot about Dofi's character because it shows what he values in a crew member, what kind of people he wants in his crew, and why he thinks that these people are his favorite among all humans. And yes, that is a weird way of phrasing it, among all humans, but you have to consider the fact that in his battle against Luffy, he even does say on multiple occasions that Luffy is nothing but a mere human, Dofi is above humans, he is on a godly level, yet at the same time he considers his crew members to be human, but he still loves them all the same. So although this topic did end up becoming a lot about Dofi's crew overall, and more specifically the top executives, it all really does come back to trouble because in a way he was kind of the ringleader of all these people. When it was all going on when Dofi was a little kid, Virgo was about the same age, where Treble was a lot older as well as the rest of the top executives, he kind of was leading this whole thing, he was the one telling Dofi that he was the true king chosen by heaven. In a way, and I would not go as far as to say this is absolute, but he kind of did found the Don Quixote family because he gave Dofi the confidence, the motivation to start this. He gave him the clear path that he had to take, the people that he needed to be a part of this crew. So while he may very well be one of the most annoying characters in the entire series, right up there with Gecko Moria, I think that he also is an extremely important character. He has the role of enhancing Dofi's character to a new level of explaining exactly what it is that Dofi values in a person. And while I don't expect anyone to enjoy the time he is on screen, I hope that maybe if you ever go back and reread, rewatch Dress Rosa, you can see the things that he's saying and consider how it is that Dofi still loves him as much as he does and could have a new appreciation for Dofi's character overall. So that pretty much wraps up this topic. If you enjoyed this video, remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Remember to leave me a comment letting me know what you thought about this video, if this was just kind of a stupid topic, or if maybe you do now have a little bit more appreciation for the role that Treble plays in the story. Let me know any ideas you have for theories, discussion videos you'd like me to do in the future. Remember to tune into my live streams between Friday and Sundays. I don't really have any specific times because it's completely based around my work schedule. I can't even guarantee that I will stream every single one of those days because sometimes I work really long hours. But yeah, make sure to check those out. I hope you guys have an excellent rest of your weekend, and I will talk to you guys on Wednesday.